Hey guys, it's Savage and welcome back to the channel. And today we are taking a look at the Grumman F7F Tiger Cat from Vatavia. Now, we've come to expect a certain level of stuff from Vatavia, so we'll have to see. But the F7F Tiger Cat is a heavy fighter developed for the US Navy, of course, and the Marine Corps in late World War II, served till 54. It was the first twin-engine fighter to be deployed by the US Navy and went on to basically be the standard by which they since operate. It was delivered too late to see combat in World War II. It saw action as a night fighter and night attack during Korean War. And it was initially designed for service on Midway class carriers. Early production models were land-based. Later ones, the N model, or the F7F 4N, served on carriers. It was too big for some of the older, smaller carriers. Now, this aircraft being one of Batavia's is actually one of the first that's slightly cheaper. It is 22 euros, uh, $24, or 19 pounds. So cheaper than previous releases. And we get three models here. We get a uh, US Navy clean version. We get a racer version with a couple of liveries. And we get a marine version with an interdiction loadout, uh, which is rockets and drop tanks. So there's some serious options here. This is not awful. Um, I am started on the runway here at Midway because I've only got runway starts at Midway. Plus at least it's stopped. It will do. Uh, I'll get on to why I'm on the runway start anyway with the engines in a minute. But, uh, so, what does this come with in terms of an aircraft from Vitavia? What we get, of course, is the usual sh spiel of it's an aircraft with really nice models. We have PBR materials and texturing, which does make a mild difference, to be fair. Uh, we have WI sound pack, which is saying a lot. You'll come to understand why, because it's not great. And we have canopies, clickable switches, not very in some cases. Toggleable pilot figures, some of the bits and pieces, rain effects, cowl flaps, oil filter, exit doors. Three flight models based on different weights, so the weights with weaponry, weights clean, and race version stripped out of military equipment. And it's an operating manual included, so we'll have to take a look now, shall we? Also, if you own the previous versions for X-Plane, you can get this for €12. Euros. It's a big discount. So the Hellcat itself, though, before we go into the actual looking at the aircraft, what's its performance data? We're looking at about 400 knots max speed, range of 1,000 nautical miles. Service ceiling is about 40,000 feet, so big. Uh, rate of climb could be 4,500 feet a minute, which is impressive. Armed with 420mm uh, cannons, four 50 cal machine guns, and uh, could carry up to 2,000 pound bombs, eight 127mm uh, unguided rockets. One 150-gallon fuel or napalm tank under the fuselage, and one torpedo, which is the day fighter only. Did some versions of the night fighter came with AN APS-19 radar. That will be important when we look at the cockpit. Let's take a look, shall we? Okay, and the engines have stopped. This is unfortunate, but also beneficial because it's quieter at least. So let's go outside. Now, I'm going to slow down here. Texturing is the typical Vatavia, not fantastic on the exterior, although they seem to have improved slightly. There is normal mapping and the texture lines are slimmer, slightly cleaner, although there's not much normal mapping. There's a little bit of relief on rivets and screws, but no real recessing on the panel lines, so it looks a bit flat. They could have pumped up the, uh, the depth, the scale even, of the uh, normal map on this and actually made it look decent, although it looks like that rib panel line there is actually embossed not recessed that's a problem the 3d model itself isn't actually bad the texturing is mediocre though and it always seems to be that way they they have some better ones they have some worse ones i will say pbr materials save vatavia a lot the materials themselves really make a big difference this one being a smaller bodied aircraft it gets away with it a lot we'll have a look inside Inside feels like a different story because the 3D modeling is great. It's actually good. Uh, I like it. Bueno. The sound effects also aren't terrible sometimes. They're not good either, but they're not terrible. Ambient sounds here are heard, mostly from the scenery. Now, this is where the radar screen would be in the Night Fighter. This knob is for said Night Fighter radar. However, it can toggle the no, the yoke visibility. This stayed on all versions. This blank hole in the panel, which was there for the Night Fighter, uh, 
was just left blank in the day fighter version so that's why it's there up here controls our pilot visibility and that controls how we can see things there you go pilot's back and when we are stopped with the engines no longer running the step ladder should go down but i think we have to shut everything completely off the step ladder comes out about here so you can climb up on the wing uh we can charge the guns they'll pop back out when they're basically ready while it's charging technically i should be able to right click on these and roll them over which is something the right click functionality of this aircraft doesn't seem to work this might be my version i don't know it could be my flight sim i don't think so because this works in other aircraft i have tested this uh today other aircraft with right clicking functions do work for me this one does not so a bunch of things like select tank selector and engine selector i cannot control because of that now i can fold the wings that's working so there is that we have folding wings very useful uh, we have, of course, our gear. We have our ignition, mags, etc. Flaps are here. Is it to one notch already? Uh, down here, all of our electronic switches and radio systems are located. A resting hook is back here. And there's our step, by the way. We'll pull this back in. So the 3D modeling isn't terrible. The texturing isn't great. It's very simple. There's no wear or weathering. Uh, the seat cushion's okay. The fabrics are okay. Okay, it's amazing for FSX. Actually, pretty darn good. For this, PBR materials is what makes this look not awful. So what gives it all the depth and shadow is the fact it's a good 3D model. And the materials can do most of the job, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Um, like I said, clickables not working for me. Oh, these are our oil doors, by the way, on the wing surface there. Completely visual on this, it has no effect. Right, let's get this thing started, and I'm going to do something I don't normally like to do. Control E. Although first I'm going to try starting with my yoke starter. It's not going to work, is it? Control E. Please let the magic happen. These engine sounds are El Tragico, which is Spanish for really bad. I don't think it's Spanish for anything. Also, for once, Batavia has a canopy where when you close it, it gets quieter actually impressed all right let's drop the wings down we kind of do need those for flight although i'd be amused to find out if i could take off with them folded i'm gonna find out if i can take off with them folded this feels like a first brilliant decision of mine the engine sounds are very steppy that's another thing all right let's rock and roll let's fly with our folded wings as a tie fighter f7 I guarantee this works. This cannot be that complicated a sim that this will not work. It's working! It's working! It's not working well! It's not working well! But we are in fact airborne with falling wings! <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm now floating on the water because that's a real thing. Uh, stay up, please. Stay up. Uh, okay. Whew, okay. Gear up. Why is this thing rolling hard to the left? No matter what I do, I'm getting a hard roll to the left. I'm not sure why. It should be sitting level on me. But it's rolling left, even though uh, my wings are out. That's unusual. Not sure why, but there you go. So we could kind of just about take off with the wings folded. It wasn't impressed, so don't give points for that one, actually. Okay, so the sounds are terrible. I'm just going to put this out there now. Uh, these sounds are awful. I would have felt better if they'd stolen default DC3 sounds. In fact, I believe these are R2800s, if I'm correct. Yeah, they are. There are 2800s. Um, so, not what was in the DC-3. I believe those were different, right, for 1820s cyclones rather than the double cyclone. 
double wasp. Yeah, correct. So, different engine. Powerful engine. These ones are about a thousand horsepower a pop, or two thousand horsepower a pop, sorry. So, they're very, very capable engines. Um, is that a cat? That's a. Is that a carrier or is that a plane? A, a ship? Oh, my head's turned on. I could just do this. I was too busy being an idiot with uh, folded wings. This is Midway Scenery. I don't know where I got this from. It's on flightsim.to. I will try and find a link to include for you in the description of the video. If I can't find it, whoops, but it's World War II and I tried to use it for testing of World War II stuff. That appears to be a ship of some kind. I'm not sure what, though. The exterior engine views aren't wonderful. There's definitely some poly clogging on the leading edge, which makes it look a bit meh. But it's not horrific. And the cockpit view is actually tolerable. Like, this is no flying iron model in the slightest. But it's not horrific. The, the engine sounds... This, I'm at half throttle at this. They've stepped back to this almost puttering idle sound. Ah, yeah, Liberty Ship. That's kind of cool. With the fake plowing uh, wake behind it. It, it is a flyable plane. It does fly quite nicely. But it's also definitely struggling with some of this. I mean, it's a heavy fighter. It's not meant to be whipping around like a Mustang, but it's certainly not uh, too great. A little bit of wear and tear on the panel with the sunlight there. I mean, it looks okay. The sounds need replacing up badly. And the right clicking is not a great thing because that's meant to be working and doesn't. Also, we do have semi-functional autopilot, at least comfort autopilot, let's call it. Uh, we can go... And this will hold heading and altitude. So if you want a simple comfort autopilot, after you've climbed your altitude and heading for a trip somewhere, you can do that. It just gets a bit louder. I want to hate this, but it's not awful enough to hate. It's got just enough saving grace that it's actually not terrible. Um, the price is better. I'll give them that. The price is considerably better. Uh, the A4 disappointed me, which could have been good. The... Okay, we'll, we'll turn around here for our turn to final. Okay, we're under 200, so we'll put a notch of flaps in. We had notch of flaps out this entire time. That's a whoops. Let's give it a proper kick with the flaps pulled in then. That was a mistake on my part. I always make mistakes like this because I'm busy talking to you guys. So now I need to correct that. But um, that's much better. Now it's got bite to its performance. Okay. Uh, now it feels a little bit more nimble. It's not like this because it's twin and you can definitely feel it start to choke off when it does that. Yeah, I, I want to hate it, but it's not horrific. It's not bad enough to hate. It's got enough saving grace that it could be savable. A good sound pack uh, to replace this horrific one. And whoever screwed up the gauge coding to actually make it left clickable, right clickable, sorry. Because again, I have tested that. It is not my sim. It is for some something on this aircraft. Ah, oh, an LST, I think. Yeah, that's cool. All right, we'll flip around this way and we'll set up for a landing approach here. So powers back. We'll drop it below two hundred. We'll put a notch of flap out. There's a Catalina down there or two. Yes, it is. I'd love a good Catalina, by the way. Aerosoft, if yours is knocking around, bring it out, but don't do what you did with the Twin Otter. Thank you. Especially seeing as they're building more Catalinas. I'm very excited to find out about that. Now, I, I, like I said, this could, be, this could be saved. This could be saved. Decent liveries and redoing the external textures and normal maps, etc. There are people out there that do that sort of thing. Uh, there's definitely texture artists in the sim community that would do that. This is a... Kind of a fan favourite aircraft of the heavy, kind of late World War II, post war heavy fighters. It has a following. New external textures would salvage this visually. There are some good 2800 sound uh, packs out there. 
Uh, so it is savable, I think. There's enough about this to make it savable. By the way, hint, this is a high-speed aerofoil, like the uh, A26 uh, Invader, which was the medium bomber, that uses the same uh, engine, the R2800. Uh, this has a high-speed aerofoil, which means it's a very symmetrical aerofoil, designed for going high speed, low drag. This also means it's not very good at dealing with changes in angular attack. It's a very narrow angular attack window. So on my approach here, you'll notice I'm going to come in very flat. And that's something I learned from the Invader, which I surprisingly have like thousands of hours on from FSX. And having them in FS economy and just generally flying the crap out of the Invader. Milton Sheep's old one, a glorious little plane. You'll notice I'm going to hold it in very flat here. And when I get down to the ground, I'm not going to flare. I'm going to blip the throttle. Watch this. Blipping the throttle just uh, arrests my descent. And I'm going to touch down almost on all three wheels at once. This is because, like I said, the angle of attack uh, window is very narrow. So if you exceed that, there's a very good chance you will stall the plane. So don't do that. It's bad for the plane. Instead, blip the throttle, which accelerates you, reduces your, your descent rate, and uh, will basically cushion that landing touchdown. You don't have to flare. It's just it's the easiest way to spill off uh, energy and speed is to flare. You can do this by blipping the throttle also. It's common in bush flying with certain high alpha approaches. A bunch of Dauntless is here. I'd love a good Dauntless. We're about to get an F4, by the way, from uh, Got Friends, and that I am super excited for because Got Friends make great aeroplanes. Right. So, uh, I believe that is the map tray, which will not pull out, which is unfortunate. But it is what it is. Right, cut those engines. It, it could be worse. But it's also not terrible. The Batavia F7F. Yeah, it's, it's alright. Thanks for watching. Bye.